Tesla announced officially they're going to be removing ultrasonic sensors this coming quarter. They're removing them from or already. They're yeah, removing them right, from right now. Y's. Yeah. Next quarter, I think they're going to be removing them from S's and uh, X's. So our our wonderful friends, I say friends because I want to be their friend. They don't know who I am at all. Uh, but at Monroe and Associates, <laughs> um, th those guys are experts. And, you know, if you haven't seen their car teardowns, you should check them out on YouTube. You really got to watch it. Great content. For sure. yes. um, but they're experts in not just taking the cars apart and knowing all the internals, but also costing. They, they really know manufacturing of cars. And I was kind of surprised at what they found when they looked at the ultrasonic sensor cost savings. They they actually estimate over $100 a car for Tesla will save. So we're talking like $120 million a year, something like that. That is a lot of money. I mean, is that is that kind of what you would expect, Mike, when you first heard about them removing them? I wasn't thinking anything close to that. I was thinking like $5 million maybe. $120 million. I wasn't thinking quite that much, but I'm kind of in the camp that James is that I view it as a safety item. And I don't sure. appreciate, I don't appreciate a safety item being taken away from me for something right. inferior. And Mike is displeased point, that they're removing them still. And I agree. I am. It's, it's, I am. Yeah. I, do you but guys I think, here's a question. This is, I don't know if this is true. I'm just asking, do you think it's because of supply chain issues? They're removing it and they're just keeping carbs being produced. And uh, it's just the reality. Could argue that. Kind of do. <laughs> Okay. That seems to be a catch-all phrase lately for everybody. I know. Everything's I know. That's why I'm like, issue, I don't so. know what's... I, I have it's no a good thing to blame it on, for sure. I guess yeah. the way I look at it is, if it wasn't supply chain, why are they removing it from the two mass market cars now and then the two less marketed cars well, next quarter? And I mean, not, I guess they don't want to update are, the process. Not um, only not re they're removing it, but they're actually reducing the functionality because they don't yeah. have the equivalent functionality yet. Right. You know, so well, that's why I was wondering. That's why I was wondering if it was moved because of a parts issue, because it's like they're kind of having to do it earlier than they were anticipating before they had the software ready. But I mean, yeah. Tesla's done that before, so I don't know if they it's have. really a, <laughs> radar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, the so whole AP. What, yeah. What are your thoughts on that, James? Were you were you disappointed when you found out they were moving radar, or when they shut I off was... the radar in your car that you had already paid for that had a radar? I wouldn't know if I'd say disappointed as strong as that. I was I was surprised because radar really does make it superhuman and 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 will solve for inclement weather. Like because ultimately in fog and snow and rain and sleet and all the road conditions I've been on, I always felt better knowing the radar was there, knowing it was a second sensor it could fall back right. on if vision was a factor. I was a little surprised, but I mean I get the idea that we do it with just two eyes and i get that perspective of elon and, and what the ai team at Your tesla car has saying. like eight eyes exactly right. it has eight eyes and you, you know, do, it do a poorly in inclement weather <laughs> yeah it's still like for me the question is when it has radar and ultrasonic sensors the ultrasonic sensors were always a bit of a pain in snow because they get covered and they're basically useless because they can't see through that anyway the sure. radar um that one was kind of to me like a—I don't want to say safety net. It was like a, a set, like I said, a second set of special eyes that saw when your cameras got blocked. Because when you're in snow and ice and slush, those side cameras get sleep, like get craps spilled sure. all over them. And when I'm on road trips in the winter, every stop I'm wiping those clean so that they can see better. So wow. the more we remove, the more we're relying on cameras, then how do they account for when a camera is occluded? So it's right. just like, that's just another question I have, how are they going to account for that when it happens? But I, I know when early, I think it was in 2017, I met someone that used to work at Tesla. I don't remember his name, but he said Tesla was basically solving for the fact that you have a collision that blocks those front three cameras. It will use the side cameras to signal and properly get off the highway. So they're thinking about scenarios about what happens when certain cameras go offline. How do they deal with it in an emergency situation and get out of the way and move the car to a safe spot? So, I mean, I know they're thinking about it, but it's going to be sure. curious to see how it hits reality and how we see these cars handle right. it in real world situations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point they just rely on, well, the, you know, the person sitting in the front yeah. seat behind the wheel, right? Like that's exactly. your, it's your problem. <laughs> yes. FSD is unavailable. Take over. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's, it's the reality is right now. We're, we're part of that s equation. We have to be involved in the, in, in the loop. I guess it's funny because you bring up a lot of issues that I personally don't have to deal with or experience since I live in Texas. Yeah. Um, 
I haven't yeah, seen yeah, snow, snow since I moved here from New York. And yeah. Uh, huh. so, yeah, I, I feel you. With us, it's hot and dry and sunny most of the time. 